All right, so boom, part two of rappers I listen to for one song. These are five rappers that they either have a few songs that I like, but it's really just one that I return to way more than the others, or it's probably not even that. <laughs> Some people on this list, they really only have one song that I like, and that's the only one that I ever play. Part one is going to be linked in the description and in the pinned comment, and what's also going to be linked down there is Young French Fry song, Certified City Boy. It's only a matter of time before I'm at the top and they're all on their ace. I count it up every day, sipping on lemonade, do it until I lay dead in a ditch. Go up like a damn grenade, sing on my serenade. I'm bored of this whole nigga, come get your bitch. She said that she love me, but honestly, I could give less of a fuck about whatever she needs. It's only a matter of time before I'm at the top hey. and they're all on their ace. Hey. Who are you, little bitch? You don't know me. Oh, you say you a freak, bitch, show me. No, I ain't the same nigga, that's the old me. I send a bitch home if that pussy like roast hey. beef. Follow Young French Fry on his SoundCloud, Instagram, and check out his YouTube channel for more tracks. Support the boy. And let me know what are some rappers that y'all listen to where they got one song that just be having you hooked. Let's go. Now, I have heard time and time again that Speaker Knockers was a great talent that was taken from us way too young and that he already had a good amount of influence when he passed away. He was making waves with the beats that he had on his own, but things really got hot for him when Meek Mill helped him out by rapping on one of his beats on the classic Dream and Nightmares tape for the song 20 Montana. Got all my niggas in the building with me? It's the speaker knockers. And from there, dude's legacy was getting created. I have come across my share of songs where I heard an artist and went, like, oh yeah, they definitely sound like speaker knockers. Roddy Rich has a song called Rich Nigga where some people will probably think this is speaker knockers. Immediately, it's not just this song. Roddy's whole career, you can tell he was inspired by SK. And there's other rappers who have said SK influenced them as well. Now, Bounce That Ass, although it's my favorite song from him, y'all know it's not his most popular song. That title belongs to Lonely. Started out with nothing, I was hungry. Now I got a couple niggas, bitches on me. And honestly, I don't even listen to Lonely. I don't think I've even heard the full song before. I only recognize a couple of lines. Like, this song is where the is you mad or no memes came from and the started out with nothing i was hungry now i got a couple niggas bitches on me part but i've never cared to listen to this whole thing but one song i damn near no word for word by speaking Nagris is bounce that ass this song and i'm not embarrassed to say this some people may call a pause on this but i don't care bounce that ass is one of those songs where if I was a female, I would be a full-blown hoe on the dance floor when I hear this song. I'm for real. This track is fire. The song is exactly what you would think it's about. Just hyping a girl up to shake her ass and throw some money on her. Speaker Knocker's voice alone is one of the reasons I love this track. I'ma throw this money like a free throw. You just keep on dancing like a freak hoe. Out your back, put your hands on your knees hoe. Bounce that ass to my muff and be hoe. He produced the song as well, like all of his other tracks. That's why he says bounce that ass to my beat. But that's another thing I love about the song. It gives me that sound of juveniles back that ass up, especially the very beginning of that song. That right there, which I just heard, reminds me of the very beginning of this song by Speaker Knockers. This song has always been dope to me. His voice matches so well with the production that I don't even care if it's a simple lady shake your ass song. It, it's great to me. Don't aim bounce that ass, yeah, for this cash, yeah. Can you make it clap, yeah, for a stack, yeah. I wanna see you twerk, yeah, put in work, yeah. Take off your shirt, yeah, go berserk, yeah. <laughs> bounce that ass, bounce that ass, bounce that ass, bounce that ass. <laughs> if you're one of those people that love Speaker Knocker's music as a whole and you think I'm sleeping by not listening to his other tracks, then let me know in the comments what songs I should listen to. Something that I talked about in one of my recent videos of why Kendrick Lamar has the worst fan base in rap, I asked a question to my viewers to name an artist where even though you like a few songs by that person and you will say that they're good, you've just never cared to check out their catalog. Anderson Pac is one of those answers for me. Pac, Pac, whoever the hell. Ever since I found this man on the 2016 XXL freshman list, I thought Anderson has a great voice, and I actually do believe people that say he's an amazing musician with his own work and with the collabs he makes with Bruno Mars. I believe y'all, but even with all that praise he gets, <laughs> I've just never wanted to listen to more, really. 
I only really listened to about three songs by him, and one of them is way more than the other two. The first song is a song he has with T.I. called At Least I Know. Anderson was very good on there, and he spit a nice verse about bringing a woman into a lavish lifestyle, but then being reluctant to leave her when she starts to change and act up a little bit too much. Now the second song is called Get Along, which is with Blue, a song with Anderson singing about his relationships with various women. But the song that I listen to the most is the one that I'm highlighting in this entry called The Shrip with Blue again. Mad Lib and MED. This song, The Strip, is from a collab album that Blue, Mad Lib, and MED made together called Bad Neighbor. And all four of these gentlemen, including Pac, are from California, so the parent was Destiny from Jump. The song is the fellas talking about the moves that they make and how much fun they have on the famous Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. Strip, ST Rip, where everybody hang at, the Strip. Them rapping and singing about their pimp, lavish lifestyles. I actually don't like Blue's verse on this song at all. His flow is very scattered and all over the place. For Mad Lib, I don't like his verse either because for half of the verse, I don't even know what he's saying. <laughs> there are some words that he says so fast that I can't even make out what he's trying to say. So admittedly, I only like this song because of the production and Anderson Park, who sounds perfect over it. It's the smallest things that Anderson says so smooth that just makes me go, hey, Anderson is that nigga. Like in the outro, he simply says, let's slide, let's slide to the West Island. But listen to how clean he sings this. So I found this project because I'm a fan of Blue and I've heard tons of projects that he has, but I would be lying if I said I enjoyed the strip because of him or because of Mad Lib. I would like this track way more if it was a solo Anderson Pac song because I only come for him anyway. I want to start this entry off by saying I don't know why people think I don't read my comments. I've gotten a few comments about other stuff and people will start it off by saying I know you will never see this or I feel like you're not going to come across this comment but I don't know where this is coming from because <laughs> if you go through the comments on any of my videos you'll see a reply from me or me hardening someone's comment. I, I be catching shit. I say that because me finding I Get Around by Ra Wave was possible from me reading this comment from a girl named Ra, who over a year ago commented on my important things I've learned from rappers video and suggested I listen to Ra's Hunger Games 2 mixtape. Now I have a history of telling people that I don't care about Ra Wave <laughs> and I ain't been that interested in listening to him. I've said this for like two and a half years now and yet people still comment asking for an Am I Sleeping video on him. Deadass, I've had people who don't even follow me on Instagram, but they will DM me just to ask me to make a Ride Wave video or to listen to his music. So when I saw a Rod's comment, I went, all right, man, damn, like, I'll play this one tape. It's not even that I think Rod Wave is ass. Like, I'm pretty sure he has a gang of songs that I may like, but I'll listen to him when I feel like it, man, not because y'all pressing me to. After hearing the entire tape, the verdict I got from it was, in his early days, Rod came off like a Dollar General Kevin Gates. He seriously did. Almost every song on here, I was hearing like, y'all know how Kevin got those melodic songs where it sounds like he's crying or something? Like his song, Satellites. That, that's what I mean. Cause ain't no one on the phone but us, someone who's strong with his rough. That type of singing is what this whole Hunger Games 2 mixtape sounds like to me. Take the song, Valid, for example. And the song January to January. So really the only song that stuck out to me and the only song by Rod Wave I ever listened to is I Get Around, which is referencing Tupac's I Get Around. Just a song about how he don't want to be in a relationship with a girl, he's a player and he only wants to hit. Now the title and the overall theme of the song I already knew were Pac references, but I just found out that this hook is a reference to Pac as well. So the beginning of the hook by Rye is you f with niggas that, wait, hold on, <clears throat> hold on, I gotta say it like Mr. Dollar General over here, hold on. <clears throat> you fucking with niggas that's insecure, water down, my shit is pure, write down my number but don't call until you're sure. That's the beginning of the hook and I just found out that these are lines from Tupac. And for anybody that's about to say, 
how did you not already know that was a reference to Tupac? Shut your ass up. But it comes from Pac's song, Rather Be a Nigga, and it's the very first lines of the first verse on that record. Fucking with niggas that's insecure. Water down, my shit is pure. Write down my number, but don't call me. And how I even found this out was when I made my best Megan Thee Stallion song video, and I heard her song, B-I-T-C-H, and that was a female flip on Rather Be a Nigga. So imagine finding out about a Pac record because of Megan Thee Stallion. Real hot girl shit. I really like I Get Around. The topic is fine, and when he gets even further to the hook and starts singing the I Get Around part, it sounds great. I get around. I get around. I, get around. I love that. <laughs> there are some Biggie references in here too. He says, Believe me, sweetie, I got enough to feed the needy. Which is from Biggie Smalls on Big Papa. But this song is my jam, and I'm sure he got other songs too, but. Hell, leave, leave me alone about making a video on this man. Now, Yo Gotti has always been one of the biggest flex rappers ever. Like, he constantly talks about having diamonds, nice cars, smashing girls, whatever the hell. His entire CMG label is pretty much centered around dudes that rap about drugs, money, and all these other generic topics. And. I'm surprised to know that Yo Gotti gets listened to by anybody. I know that's disrespectful to say, but I don't know anybody who's a Yo Gotti fan. It must be a regional thing because I live in Michigan. I've been living in Michigan my whole life, so that's probably what it is. Niggas in Michigan don't care about Yo Gotti. But if I was to be in Gotti's hometown, I'm sure he's a legend over there. The only other song I really play by him is the song Five Star Chick and the Be For Real. I only listen to that song for the ladies. When I play that track, I immediately skip to the second half of the song to hear Trina and Nicki Minaj. How I found everybody was in my very first semester in college. My very first semester. So I started college in September 2014. And funny enough, this song Everybody came out in August 2014. So this wasn't some old Yo Gotti track. This was his newest hit. I was getting a ride home from one of my homies that I have known for a few weeks. And listen, I promise you that I'm not one of those niggas that complains about the music somebody is playing if I'm in somebody else's car. I, I never do that. But what happened was while my mans was driving me home, I was hearing this song playing. Everybody wanna be a dope boy. Everybody wanna be a coke boy. Everybody got a chopper. Everybody getting money. Everybody say they're from the hood. Everybody real, but they not boy. And I was like, hey, what song is this? And my boy was like, it's called Everybody by Yo Gotti. And my response, I said it in such an insulting way. I was like, you listen to Yo Gotti? He was like, yeah, why, why'd you ask it like that? What's wrong with listening to Yo Gotti? I was like, nothing. I, I was just asking because I've never seen that before. I promise I'm not trying to talk trash about Yo Gotti. That, that was just fascinating to see. But it wasn't my car, so I couldn't really say anything. <laughs> Fast forward eight and a half years later, and this is still pretty much the only song I like by this man. And Everybody is actually a great song to me. Like, for real, I'll say it's great. The track is Gotti calling out people who flaunt and lie about their lifestyle, whether in real life or on social media, and saying that everybody brags about the same thing, but only a few people really have it like that and are being their authentic selves while everyone else is just fronting. But even he admits that he used to flex and flaunt. He's not even trying to be a saint because everybody has done it at some point. Everybody said they got haters, everybody got paper. I guess ain't nobody broke. Who would me to talk about the next nigga out here flex when I did it before? I really like everybody. It has some generic flexing lines in there, of course, <laughs> he can't avoid those. But overall, the subject of the song makes it cool to me. Everybody said they started from the bottom, not at the top. Everybody said they got a bad bitch. Like, some of y'all lying out here because this doesn't apply to everybody. <laughs> this is just a lesson to not get anybody's car complaining about the music they playing because you may end up enjoying the song. I know you tired of niggas, girl, but that's not my fault. You need a real nigga. Now, don't worry. I'm not about to be on here on some Asian doll stuff and be like, King Von ain't never hurt nobody. Everybody calling him a killer is a liar. I don't care about any of that stuff. I don't listen to King Von simply because he's never appealed to me that much. The Crazy Story series is fire, but I never went back to playing them after my first time hearing them all. Now, how I found this song, I, I honestly don't remember if it was Intensified Charts or The Toxiris. It, it was one of them, but I was watching some list video from a hip hop YouTuber ranking something about King Von. And the moment I heard, I know you tired of niggas, girl, but that's not my fault. That one line hooked me in. I was like, hold on, hold on, what song is this? 
And thus, we have Not My Fault featuring A Boogie with the Hoodie from Vaughn's What It Means to Be King album. The song is very simple, with Vaughn singing about how he's talking to a shorty that's currently in a bad relationship. She's getting abused by her man and not being treated right. So this demon, Vaughn, uses that as an opportunity to pick shorty up for himself. He's even thinking about putting the hit out on the boyfriend to get him gone if that's what she wants. To no one's surprise, A Bookie is not as dangerous as Vaughn in his verse. The only threatening thing he says to his girl is, Catch you with that nigga, I'm gonna treat you like my husband. The positives from Boogie's verse is mainly his singing and not really what he's saying. But honestly, that's the whole song for me. This is the first melodic song I've ever heard from Vaughn. I'm used to coming across his gangster rah-rah music. Now, will y'all believe that the music video for this song got one of the words wrong? <laughs> There's a line where A Boogie says, Clear as day, I be getting paper like loose leaf getting guap. I be getting paper like loose leaf getting guap. But the lyrics in the lyric video put, I be getting paper like Louis be getting guap. This line doesn't even make sense because it could have been getting money like Louis Vuitton, but Louis is spelled with an S at the end, not an E. So when I saw this lyric video, I was like, damn, I hope a nigga from O Block didn't edit this because O Block niggas can't spell. <laughs> Actually, let me, let me not say that before somebody try to pull up on me, come after me. N not My Fault is a cool track to me regardless. I know you tired of niggas, girl, but that's not my fault. Outro, outro.